So one of the worst leaders, in, I think, in Chinese, recent Chinese history, Zhang Zemin, and you mentioned him, uh, decided in April of 1999, let me tell you what happened, it's actually a fascinating story. The, uh, the Falun Gong community in Beijing uh, had a number of articles written attacking them, and they decided they would go and protest, which is their legal right, around the Communist Party headquarters in, in Beijing. They, um, about 10,000 of them, gathered on the sidewalk silently. There was no, they didn't even leave litter, if you can imagine. They said nothing. They just sat around the party headquarters for the day. President Jiang Zemin came out of the headquarters in his black limousine with tinted windows, drove around, and he saw that uh, in the crowd were members of the party, uh, diplomats, academics, uh, soldiers. Everybody was doing Falun Gong, and, and uh, the party was actually encouraging it up until then. He drove back into the party headquarters, and that night he wrote a letter, which has been seen, saying, who is going to prevail, Falun Gong or the Communist Party? And uh, tragically, very tragically, he declared war uh, almost the next day, and the war has continued up to and including today. Um, so I could, uh, I've actually talked about this in many, many places. Um, you say, well, what evidence do you have that uh, Falun Gong are being killed for their organs. Well, I was a prosecutor for 10 years in Canada. I should know something about evidence. And David Maitis has been a lawyer for 35 years in Canada. The evidence, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely overwhelming that this is happening. We actually found 52 kinds of evidence. Petra said it was circumstantial. By the way, I don't know how many of you are lawyers, but do you know what circumstantial evidence is? It's when you find, it's when you find a dead body you find a bullet in the body that came from a gun that was being held for a man, probably a man, whose fingerprints you have. Now, the trouble with, with what's happening in China is that the victims, as you gather, are all dead. The people who are doing these terrible operations are being paid enormously for it. They, they don't give evidence. They're not going to come and tell us. So we have one piece of the 52 pieces of evidence is this. The wife of a surgeon in Sujiatin told us that her husband removed the corneas from 50, sorry, 2,000 Falun Gong practitioners over a two-year period, 2001 to 2003. Well, as I mentioned before, he broke down and they left the country. But um, we have got enormous amounts of evidence, and if, if you want to ask me about it in question or comment period, I'll be happy to tell you more about the, the evidence. Oh, you can get our report on the internet. Simply, simply go david-kilgore.com and you can get our report in 18 languages, including, I think, I'm quite certain, Swedish. So you can judge for yourself if the evidence isn't strong enough. I, uh, I think I'm probably running out of time. I, I was going to tell you a little bit about what other governments are doing about this. Um, in Australia, the government of New South Wales is proposing a law in their parliament to say that anybody who who buys a trafficked organ anywhere, it doesn't, the bill doesn't even mention China, is committing an offense. Um, let me tell you about, about Israel. Israel has actually done the most. Up until about 2007, the insurance company in Israel would pay people who needed a kidney or a liver in Israel to fly to, uh, to China, pay their airfare, pay for the organs, which was enormous amounts of money, and would pay to bring them home. Thank goodness a doctor, a Jay Lavi, in Tel Aviv discovered what was going on, and he passed a law which basically bars Israelis from buying trafficked organs anywhere. Since that time, nobody, to my knowledge, has gone from Israel to China to buy an organ. Why doesn't, why doesn't Sweden do the same thing? You may be saying to yourself, well, how many Swedes are going for organs to China? I certainly don't know, but uh, I know that there are people going from Britain to, to China still. There, I believe there are people going from Canada. And if nobody's going, fine. But if you pass a law saying that no Swede may buy a trafficked organ anywhere, then uh, your consciences would be clear. And I would, I would encourage your parliament to do that. Uh, other countries have done some things. Others have done very little. Um, uh, Spain... Actually, Spain is the leader. Spain has, uh, 
as you probably know, Spain has the best record for voluntary organ donations. And obviously, I'm in favor of voluntary organ, or, or, voluntary organ donors. Spain has, um, has launched a lawsuit uh, this year against one Spanish patient who went to China for organ transplants and promoted uh, the behavior. So in Spain, they are really taking a tough stand on this. And again, I would urge you to do the same. Uh, I hear Sweden. Do Swedish nationals who travel to China for organ transplants and subsequently receive aftercare here? I think they do. Um, we've, um, you probably guessed that these organ transplants are done in total secrecy. They're, um, uh, they're done, I think, badly, a lot of them. A lot of the patients die after they get these organs because they're badly done. Um, they're, uh, the, identities, the identities of the doctor, for example, are now concealed. So you can't get a, any record from China as to how they're being done and what was done. Um, I'm just about uh, ready to... S so I guess, to finally then, to close, recommendations. I would, the, the main one, we have about 20 in our book, but the main one is to please pass a law in, in this uh, highly respected country that bars, uh, that bars uh, Swedes from going to buy a trafficked organ anywhere. Is that a good place to stop? And we can have questions or comments? Thank you very much. <laughs>